It's important to remember that the primary goal, the main purpose of any movie, is to entertain an audience. It's a cardinal sin in the movie world to bore people. For the scriptwriter, this means that every character and every situation we write needs to be interesting and intriguing. Our creative juices begin to flow after we've had the idea and the craft of developing this idea into a script and then eventually into a movie is the focus of this course. In this lecture I'll cover the course content and some general broad concepts. The first section deals with the creative aspects of script writing such as genre, theme, characters, plot and structure. In the second part we cover the practical aspects of script format and the conventions of script directions and script analysis. Before we move on I'm going to just go through some general concepts about the craft of script writing in the form of bullet points. It would be beneficial if you downloaded these bullet points from the resource area for this lecture and kept them by your workplace. The traditional ideas of a story arc as applied to novel writing do apply to movie making, even more so. The vast majority of great movies are character driven and not plot driven. Audiences are interested in the characters, how they react to challenges, how they change over time throughout the story. A plot driven movie doesn't take this into account. Of course, exceptions do prove the rule, with characters like James Bond and Indiana Jones, but even Indiana Jones changed a little in his last movie, when his father said, let it go Indy, and he realised that there were things more important than chalices or archaeological artefacts. The writer needs to create a hero that the audience can't help but follow. This character needs to have a strong character arc. We'll expand on this later, but the character arc describes how the character undergoes internal changes to his character. The hero should suffer through challenges and overcome them, more and more with increasing intensity towards the climax of the movie. His beliefs and physical endurance are all challenged to the utmost. It's a great idea for a new scriptwriter to read many, many movie scripts, particularly the ones that are very successful. Read through the scripts, taking notes, and reverse engineer what makes an appealing movie. The concept of show, don't tell, is true for all mediums relating a story. But for script writing, it's much more important than if you are writing a novel. The scriptwriter relates the backstory, which is the character's history, through dialogue and action. You can also use action to show the character's interior landscape, how they're feeling and what conflicts they have inside. Bear in mind that action should take around 80% of the time of your script. Try and keep dialogue punchy to a minimum and have purpose. The dialogue should have purpose and push the plot forward. Keep the scenes short. Between two to three minutes is ideal. Vary the scene length, the kind of action and the settings. This gives a varied pace and a rhythm to the overall story. Always use standard script formats and directions. Don't try and invent your own, it will not be appreciated. Keep your script length from 100 to 120 pages. 100 words on a movie script is equal to about one minute of real time. In the next lecture, I'm going to talk about how to tell the story and discuss the concepts of theme and conflict. You learn about the important elements necessary to create a compelling storyline for your movie script.
we're all fascinated by the experiences and exploits of other people, particularly if we can identify with them and we want to know what happens to them. Even more so if the challenges they face are dangerous or exciting. We want to know how they react to events and how they overcome challenges. This phenomenon is at the heart of storytelling and is one of the essential ingredients of a great film. The scriptwriter's job is to take this idea and transfer it into a movie script format. The process is very similar to that used when writing a novel. The main character experiences a series of challenging events, each more serious than the last. This series of events is known as the plot. How the character reacts to and overcomes these events we call the story. The protagonist, or the hero, changes profoundly inside as a result of facing and overcoming opposing challenges. This is known as the character arc and the idea is central to 95% of all successful modern movies. The hero's most severe challenges should come from the villain or the antagonist. He, she or it could be misguided, mindless, ignorant or just plain evil. But the antagonist's goal is directly opposite to the hero's. The antagonist can be human, a man or a woman, or an animal, or an idea, or even just an effect of nature. Support characters can be either a foil or almost an equal partner with the hero. Equal partners should be physically different and have different personality traits and skills. So a successful movie reveals the internal changes that the main character goes through as a result of overcoming severe challenges. The end of the movie should bring a deeper understanding to the audience. It's the hidden message that the writer wants to convey. This essential element is part of the craft of storytelling. Storytelling is how we get the message across to the audience. It follows a certain theme within a genre. The genre is the classification of the movie. Placing a movie in a category helps define a set of expectations in the minds of the audience about what they are about to see. For example, in the genre of science fiction, people generally expect to see futuristic scenes, perhaps with robots, space battles and aliens. Because a genre is very broad, each can be split into subgenre, and in some cases sub-subgenres. The theme is the underlying meaning and lesson of the story. Without the theme running through and uniting the story parts, the movie would become little more than a series of events. The theme provides unity and links all the parts together. It's the message that the writer wants to convey to the audience. Examples of common themes are friendship, fate, destiny, brotherhood, freedom, innocence, justice and resurrection. The main character's previous life and history is revealed by use of dialogue in the first few minutes of the movie. Dialogue in action is used because telling the audience would be boring. It would also slow the movie down at a very critical point, the beginning. The beginning should grab the audience's attention and it's best if the start is based in some kind of action. The back history can be partly revealed by dialogue during that action and more fully as the first quarter of the movie develops. In the next lecture you learn how the classic story arc 
is adapted to script writing and how to structure a successful movie storyline. The classic story arc shows the way in which a writer can engage the reader's attention, whether it be a film or a novel or any other work of fiction. The story arc follows a basic three-act structure, first proposed by Aristotle. After the beginning, in which the stage is set for the plot to develop, the upward slope indicates increasing tension towards a climax. After the climax, the tension falls. The situation normalises and questions are answered for the audience. In practice, however, the process is not as simple as shown here. The rising action phase of the arc should have several peaks of tension to represent challenges. Each challenge is greater than the last one until the challenge representing the climax seems impossible to overcome. The hero is definitely finished. Or is he? Modern script writers have taken the basic idea of Aristotle and they've adapted it slightly and making it a little more complicated. The celebrated scriptwriter Sid Field produces a three-act structure in which he introduces pivotal points that change the direction of the overall movie story. Act 1 is called the setup, Act 2 confrontation and Act 3 the resolution. In Act 1, which represents 25% of the whole story, all the main characters should be identified. The audience is made aware of the hero's goal. Supporting characters are introduced and the setup is complete. Act 1 ends with plot point 1, which is an incident that turns the plot to a new direction. The hero decides to pursue his goal and takes further action to achieve it. This goal opposes that of the villain. Pinch point one is tension introduced by an obstacle that also reveals and hints at the struggle ahead with the villain. Act two accounts for 50% of the movie script. Here the hero sees and overcomes challenge after challenge, as described in the classic story arc. The midpoint is the first major clash with a villain. The hero is forced to enter the villain's world to follow his quest. Intense conflict develops between them. Pinch point two helps to escalate the tension, often by presenting a challenge from a different direction. For example, in the movie Die Hard, the FBI mistake John McClane for a terrorist and they try to shoot him. Plot point two is a time of maximum challenge called the climax in the classic story arc. The hero is physically, mentally and morally exhausted. The ending is generally the last ten pages of the script. The hero sees a deeper meaning to his quest. He summons up hidden reserves of courage and he overcomes the villain. Some script writers have gone even further than Sid Field and they've produced complex structure arrangements intended to help the scriptwriter. However, for our purposes, the basic Sid Field idea of a three-act structure works very well. It gives us all the elements we could possibly need to create our movie. One more movie script structure to take a look at is the one produced by Michael Hogue. It's a six-stage structure but as you can see, it's very, very similar to the three-act structure proposed by Aristotle 
and the one proposed by Sid Field. We still have the three X, we have the 50% midpoint, but it's broken down into further smaller percentages, so it's a little more precise than Sid Field's paradigm. The setup is exactly the same in Act 1, and there's a turning point at the 10% point. An opportunity. An opportunity to do something. Something happens, there's an incident which makes the hero react. He enters a new situation, and at the 25% point, there's a turning point, which is similar to the plot point of Sid Field's paradigm. Now this represents quite a, a big change of plans, and throughout the 50% that represents Act 2, he starts to enter into the conflict with the villain. He does break Act 2 up into two parts, and in the second stage, which he calls Stage 4, there are complications, things get worse, the stakes are much higher, and the, the struggle between the hero and the villain becomes very personal and very intense. At the 75% mark, there's a major turning point, a major setback. There's something happens and it's looking really bad for the hero. The climax of the structure, which is turning point number five, and the final push where he overcomes a villain, acts in the last 10% of the structure. This paradigm is interesting because above the structure we can see that there are some notes relating to the hero's inner journey. This is the change that he goes through internally and is normally not shown in the structure of a, of a movie script. The modern movie structure is surprisingly similar to a formula produced in the 1930s by a pulp fiction author named Lester Dent. Lester Dent specified for each 1500 words of a 6000 word story exactly what should happen. Dent specifies exactly what should happen to the hero every 1500 words. And this is the kind of analysis that the scriptwriter needs to apply to his own work. You can download the complete formula in the resources section of this lecture. In the first 1500 words, he indicates that all the main characters should be introduced into the action, just like recommended in a movie. The hero dives into the quest and experiences a challenge near the end of the passage. He also specifies a plot twist, which could reflect Sid Field's pinch point or plot point. The second 1500 words bring more challenges to the hero, leading to a physical conflict. This represents the rising action part of the classic story arc. The third 1500 words see the hero making some progress in his quest, facing another physical conflict and ending it in a major setback. Finally, the hero is almost defeated, but wins by summoning up new reserves of skill, strength or intelligence. Lester Dent pays more attention to plot twists than the hero's in a journey, which is called the character arc. But apart from that, the formula works quite well as a template for an exciting story of any kind. The idea of increasing tension through conflict and overcoming challenges is at the core of his formula and is still the way that we write novels and movies to this day. In the next lecture, we're going to start writing the script. The subject is characters and setup. You probably have several ideas for a movie, and that's why you're here now taking this course. It's time to take one of these ideas, your best idea, 
and to flesh it out. We need to know more about it and the people involved before we start to commit it to a script. Before beginning a script, the writer needs to know as much as possible about his characters. He needs to know what makes them tick. They need to live and breathe for him before they can live and breathe for the audience. To do this, we need to ask ourselves many questions about the setup, the conflict and the resolution of our movie. Ask these questions about your hero. Who is he or she? In this simple question, you should include as many aspects of a personality, just as if he or she were a living person, because for the audience, they will be. What does your hero want? How badly do they want it? And why do they want it? What do they have to do to get it? Do they have the skills and the courage to get it? And what do they need to learn before they have a chance of getting it? This is important and relates to the character's internal scenery as described in the classic character arc. In the central 50% of the movie, the conflict phase, we need to ask ourselves who is the villain? Let's describe him. What does the villain want? What is his goal? How does the villain oppose the hero? His goal should oppose the goal of the main character. We need to identify the hero's weaknesses. How does the villain use these weaknesses to exploit the character and try to defeat him. How does the conflict and the tension increase towards the climax as it should? And lastly, how does the hero overcome his major weakness and change himself in order to win and defeat the villain? In the resolution phase, which includes the climax, what makes the hero keep battling on? Setback after setback, defeat after defeat, he just carries on. When and how does a hero realize he has to learn something, an important lesson, and change internally before he can overcome the final challenge? What are the moral choices he has to make to succeed in the quest? Now you have a more concrete idea of the points we just covered. We can start to describe the movie script in more detail in the form of beats. A beat is a sequence of scenes, each lasting between two to three minutes. A description of a movie script in terms of beats might look like this. Starting at beat one, Introduce the main characters, but focus on the hero and the setting, of course. Specify who and where they are. Use the initial dialogue and action to reveal the partial backstory. Show his links with any associates, because support characters are very important for a movie script. What does a hero want? He reveals or discovers, very close to the start of the movie, a need or a desire. Or he has a problem that needs to be solved. Make the audience aware of what the hero needs to learn, or how to change something in himself to get his goal. Bear in mind, he may not even know this himself yet, he becomes confused and moves in wrong directions. The hero starts to act to reach his goal, but he hasn't learned that important lesson yet. His approach is wrong. He meets setbacks and becomes confused and dispirited. 
Number five, the villain, of course, has a goal, which is opposite to the hero's. So he opposes him more and more intensely as the script develops. This is a point of a major setback for the hero. He still hasn't learned his lesson. The action intensifies as the villain opposes even more intensely. The hero's friends desert him at this point and things are really bad. At beat seven, the rising conflict reaches a climax. The hero is almost spent and has no hope of reaching his goal. Final defeat is staring him in the face. The hero summons all of his resources for a final all-out attempt. The hero wins in the end because he realizes there is more to life than he thought. In the last two lectures, I talked quite extensively about the basic structure, the formula for a story that can be applied to a movie script and that will be followed and will be found appealing by an audience. The audience will identify with the characters. They will see the plot events as important to the character's development and they want to keep watching to see what happens. The tension and the conflict mount towards the climax and eventually the resolution towards the end of the film. Now this formula is well tested and should be used, particularly if you're a new writer. Now eventually you will want your script to be read by a professional. In your heart of hearts you want your script to be read and if possible made into a movie. When a professional reader takes a look at your script he'll be on the lookout for two things. First of all a creative aspect and secondly the script format. In the setup phase of the script, which is the first 10 to 20 pages, he will find all he needs to know about whether to carry on or reject it. In those first pages, the reader will be checking the elements included in the setup phase of your story. If the elements of main character introduction, setting and back history introduced by dialogue are not there, he will probably not bother to read the rest of the script. Likewise, if the script format and directions are not to industry standard, he probably will put the script down and forget it. In the next lecture, we're going to look at the subject of script format and directions. First of all, in a broad sense, and then we'll look at more detailed explanations of how you need to describe your script. Although the ideas of story arcs and character arcs apply both to novels and movies, there is a big difference, one big difference between the two. When an author finishes a novel, after rewriting and editing, it is a finished product. It can be read. When a scriptwriter finishes a script, it is just the first stage in a long process. It is not a finished product, but simply a plan. It's a blueprint for other people to follow. A script should contain all the instructions needed by a production team to make the movie. The instructions will be read by a production team comprising of the producer, director, the actors, the lighting team, effects team and many more. Around 40 professionals in all are needed to get a movie together plus the hundreds of associates that they direct. The script has a special layout with each instruction indented to different depths so that all members of the production team can find what they need quickly and easily. We're not going to cover the exact detail of the indents in this course because there are so many automatic tools that exist on the internet that it's simply not necessary to create your script from scratch. 
The format is an industry standard and really must be followed. The categories of instructions are as follows. A scene heading, which is also known as a slug line, tells us where the scene takes place, if it's inside or outside, and the approximate time of day. Action describes what is happening in a visual way. We show but don't tell. Describe behavior but not internal emotions or thoughts. Everything is expressed in action. Use the active voice rather than the passive. As you might think, character name indicates who is talking. Don't use names that are the same for two different characters or even very similar. Be consistent. Use the same name throughout the script. If you have a Mr. Frank Burns, don't use Mr. Burns one time or Frank Burns another or simply Frank for the next. Lead characters can always be called by their first names. Dialogue is every word that is heard on the screen, if the speaker is seen or not. Extensions to dialogue can be VO or OS. VO stands for voiceover and OS is off screen. Parentheticals are directions to actors. These carry indications, some indication of how the words should be read. The shot direction indicates that the focus shifts to a person or a thing within the same scene. Examples are close on the snake or back to scene after the focus is ended. Examples of transitions are cut to, pan to, fade out, wipe to and dissolve to. There are many more, but these are used very sparingly. For example, fade in and fade out are used at the beginning of the movie and at the end. The cut may be used to emphasize within a scene, but the rest of the transitions are almost never used. Using dissolve or cut at the end of a scene is not necessary because it's obvious when a new scene starts. And before we move on to more precise definitions with some examples, here are a few tips to help you as you start to write your first script. Fade in and fade out are only used at the beginning and the end of the movie. If we want to change location, say from inside this library to the garden, then we use a dissolve or a cut. To avoid confusion, remember that a scene heading is also called a slug line. A scene heading appears whenever there's a change in time or in location. It contains certain information, three pieces of information to be precise. Whether the scene is inside, in which case it will be marked internal or INT, or external, outside, and it will contain the information EXT with a period behind it. The location will also be specified, for example, in the car park or in the Heiser building, and the time of day, the approximate time of day. It may just read day, night, or morning, or evening. In general, a movie script is between 100 and 120 pages, and there's a reason for this because a modern movie 
tends to be between one and a half and two hours long. In a movie script, one page equals one minute of real-time action. So a script of 120 pages will equal a two-hour film. As a general rule, don't start a scene with dialogue. Introduce an actor with movement and action before he speaks. So in this lecture, I gave you the broad ideas of the scene heading and the various instructions that you'll find on a script. In the next lecture, we're going to delve a little bit deeper into the detail and look at some variations that can help the script to come alive. In this lecture, I'm going to describe some professional tips for your script writing. First of all, begin your script with the words fade in. After this, you can write the first scene heading or a description. Scene headings begin with INT or EXT to denote internal or external. These are always written in capitals and followed by a full stop or a period. Next comes the location, for example, car park or the CEO's office. And the scene heading ends with the words day or night. If absolutely necessary, you could add dawn or dusk but avoid this if you can. If you use these terms, it means that the production team has to catch good conditions at the right time of day at a certain location. It adds to production costs and it causes delays. You can show the passage of time like this. And action like this or indicate a special circumstance like this. If a scene takes place in multiple locations, for example, different offices in the same building, it isn't necessary to create a scene heading for each one. Just write a subheading to indicate the location and do not include day or night. Keep descriptions down to three or four lines of text. Add only relevant information and don't try to describe every detail about the setting. The reader will imagine the details and it's also the director's job to provide them. Write only what you see on the screen. Don't write someone's thoughts any emotion should be given a physical manifestation which can be described or portrayed in action by the actor. When you describe a character, when he appears for the first time, capitalize his name. Describe him briefly, preferably through action and dialogue. Main characters have a detailed description while minor characters maybe just have one or two lines to describe them. Standard conventions do exist for quite a few camera directions, but you're not a cameraman, you're writing the script, so don't use them. One exception might be close or close up, which may be necessary to increase tension and drama. Dialogue is possibly the most difficult aspect of writing a movie script. It creates characters, generates emotion, and it generally moves the story along. Don't use quotes, bold letters, or italics. Spell out the numbers so that three 
is written as three, T-H-R-E-E. -E. Keep the dialogue concise and punchy. Avoid big blocks of words, particularly if many of them are unnecessary. Try not to write clichés. Replace them with your own words. Make something unique so that your writing stands out. Give each character a dialogue style that differentiates them from each other. The reader should almost know who is speaking by the way that he's speaking. Dialogue should seem natural. In daily life, observe how people speak and copy it, but don't include the phrases that don't move the story or the plot forward. To get a good handle on how to write dialogue, read many successful scripts, as many as you can. In this way, you'll learn how the professionals structure their characters' dialogue to the best effect. When someone speaks and they're not in the scene, it's called a voiceover. And in brackets or parentheses, V-O is written next to the character's name. If a character is in a scene but can't be seen, they are off screen. And in parentheses, OS is written by their name. This is often used if a person is speaking from another room. When you have two people speaking on the telephone, either show just one character on screen and use OS for the other, which means off screen, or use a direction called intercut. Each character is therefore shown each time they speak. The camera cuts back and forth between them. And lastly, if there are important sounds that you want to emphasize, then in your descriptions capitalize the word. Even if action movies are not your thing and you don't particularly want to write that kind of script, it's widely recognized that the script for Die Hard with Bruce Willis is probably one of the near perfect scripts in existence. So for this lecture, we're going to analyze this film and teach you how to reverse engineer a movie or a product to find out why it's so good. This method of reverse engineering a movie is very powerful. It shows you how each part is constructed so that it's appealing for the audience and they want to watch it right until the very end. We discover the very elements that you need to incorporate into your own script writing. If you're not familiar with the movie Die Hard, let's take a minute to look at the preview, the theatrical trailer. We thank you one and all and wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! It's Christmas Eve in L.A. But a team of terrorists... You want money? What kind of terrorists are you? Who said we were terrorists? ...have their own holiday plans. And I'm telling you, you're just gonna have to kill me. Okay. We do it the hard way. But the one thing they didn't plan on was New York cop John McLean. Got invited to the Christmas party by mistake. Who knew? Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? Yippee-ki-yay, mother... And you'll have it! They have already killed one hostage. This channel is reserved for emergency calls only. Lady, do I sound like I'm ordered a pizza? <laughs> Papa, honey. Are you really an American? Only if New Jersey counts. What does he think he's doing? Good job. They're using artillery on us. You appear here. It's not the police. It's him. <laughs> 
He's an easy guy to like. Welcome to the party, pal. And a hard man to kill. Bruce Willis. Die Hard. From the trailer, you can see the general style of the movie. But if you're not familiar with the story, it is quite old after all. Let me take you through the basic story. But first of all, the main characters. The hero is John McClane. He's a New York cop, about 40 years old. His main characteristic, his personality trait, is that he's into his job and he's selfish. The villain, the antagonist who's against him, is a man called Hans Gruber. Holly is John's wife. They are separated and live in different cities. The external goal of the hero, of John McLean, is to save Holly and the hostages from Hans Gruber. His internal goal, his character arc, is to become unselfish, to support his wife's career in a different city. He doesn't realise how important his wife is to him until he finds that she's in danger. He comes to understand throughout the film that compromise is more important than his own selfish needs. The story unfolds as follows. In Act 1, McLean comes to the Nakatomi building at a Christmas party. Nakatomi Incorporated is where his wife, his estranged wife, is head of advertising. Soon afterwards, everyone is taken hostage by Gruber and his men. Holly's boss is shot and McLean escapes unseen to an upper floor of the building which is undergoing construction. He tries to alert the authorities by activating the building fire alarm. In the second act, before the midpoint, Gruber cancels the fire call. Meanwhile, one of his men finds McLean and McLean kills him. The cop now has a walkie-talkie and he alerts the authorities. A visiting cop car is just about to leave the area when McLean throws the dead body of the terrorist out of the window. The corpse lands on top of the cop's car, who reverses quickly out of gunfire range and calls for backup. I'm going to stop right there because to analyse the whole movie is way beyond the scope of this course. Suffice to say that John McLean wins in the end and he's uh, reattached to his wife and uh, everyone lives happily ever after. I wanted to give you a flavour of the film and now we're going to take a look at how it fits into the structure of the three-act paradigm proposed by Sid Field. After this we're going to take a look at Act 1 and the way that the setup part of the movie is brilliantly planned. When you come to analyse the movie Take the three-act structure as uh, proposed by Sid Field and mark down where certain events appear. Remember from the classic story arc that we see rising action after the exposition or the setup phase which is Act 1. Throughout Act 2 and mostly through Act 3 we're moving, the conflict is rising towards a climax and after this we have falling action towards the end. In your analysis, mark the events, the conflicts, particularly in Act 2, as they appear in the script pages and mark the pages down on the paradigm. In this way, you'll start to see how the events increase in intensity towards the climax. Pay particular attention to Act 1. This is where everything is set up. The things that are going to appear in the rest of the movie and the situations and the weaknesses of the hero are all going to be exposed throughout the movie. A series of conflict events is simply not enough to create an exciting movie. The crafting of a movie 
is much more subtle than that. For example, a hero with flaws and weaknesses with some life lesson to learn is essential. Not only does the hero have to overcome physical challenges but also face his deepest fears. His internal landscape changes so that he learns a valuable lesson towards the end of the movie. The hero's failings and weaknesses are revealed in Act 1, the setup, which is also the place where other devices are cleverly introduced to the audience. For me, the genius of this script is the way the foundations are set in the first pages, and then used in the challenges that are revealed later on in the movie. Here are a few examples from Act 1. I call the first one Setup 1. McLean is in an airplane. He grips the arms of his seats as the plane comes into land. His neighbour notices and comments. McLean explains that he's afraid of heights. The audience now knows that McLean is scared of heights. The payoff to this setup comes later, when McLean has to leap from the top of a tall building. And from the same scene, setup two comes when the fellow passenger notices McLean's fear and tension. He gives him a remedy. By removing his shoes and balling up his toes on a carpet, he'll relieve tension, he tells him. The payoff comes later on in the movie when McLean takes his shoes off to do exercises at the same time that Gruber's men strike. He escapes with his gun and throughout the whole movie he fights Gruber's team with no shoes. At one point he has to run across broken glass and cuts his feet up. Setup 3 is when the fellow passenger sees his shoulder holster. McLean explains why he has a gun. Now the audience knows that McLean is a New York cop. Setup 4 arrives when the limousine driver questions him about his trip. Why are you here in Los Angeles? McLean is reluctant to speak but eventually he does give some answers. From this the audience knows that McLean lives in New York that his wife, Holly, lives in L.A. So there is some conflict because they are estranged. In setup 5, Holly shows McLean a Rolex given to her by the company. The payoff comes in the last scene of the movie when Gruber is hanging onto Holly's arm at the top of the building. He's gripping the Rolex strap. McLean flips the catch and he falls to the ground. For an exercise, read through the script up to the point where McLean pulls the fire alarm. See if you can spot other setups. Understanding the links between the setup in Act 1 and the challenges that appear later on is essential if you are to craft a great script. The falling action after the big climax should answer important questions for the audience and also show how the hero has changed due to his ordeal. Script analysis is one of your most powerful tools for understanding how scripts are planned meticulously right down to the last detail. Analyze your favorite films and find out what makes them tick. After this, apply the structure to your own scripts. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the Amazon tool for writing scripts, Amazon Screenwriter. In this lecture, I want to introduce you to a free screenwriting tool called Amazon Storywriter. It's a cloud-based application. You can simply sign in with your Amazon account. So I'm going to sign in now. Fill in my details and sign in. 
and I'm directly into the application. You can see that I have two scripts that I'm already working on, but today, for the demonstration, I want to create a script. So I, I click on the Create a Script button on the left-hand side, and immediately I'm ready good to go. The first page is a title page, a very simple title page. We simply write something in here, test script, and your name, James. And so we're ready to go. We can start. What I like about Scriptwriter, Amazon Storywriter, of course, is that it's free, but also it's a very simple layout. There's no advanced details, it's pretty intuitive what you need to do. In an earlier lecture, we saw how scripts are written to a standard industry format, whereby each rubric, each category, is indented by a certain amount. A program like Storywriter does this automatically, as you'll see. Now before we start the movie, we write Fade In, which is how every modern movie starts. We click Enter, and you can see that it's jumped to the right-hand side. It's been identified as a transition, and this is where transitions belong. So the very first thing we want to do is to write a scene. So we click on Scene Heading, and I'm going to say that it's internal. So INT with a period, click a space, and then we need to write the location. I'm going to say an airplane hangar, space, hyphen, and now we need to specify the day or the night. I'm going to say that it's night time. Now we press enter and you can see immediately it jumps to the category action. Now I have some uh, some text prepared for the action so I'll simply paste it in. So John enters running, he's distressed, he's hiding, and when he's hidden another man enters holding a gun. So we don't have to write uh, fantastic prose, we simply describe events as they're happening with short sentences. We leave it to the reader's imagination to fill in the details of the man's dress and, and things like this. OK, so we can press Enter and click on Character because we want Smith to speak. When I click on Character, you can see the cursor moves right over to the correct position. We write the character's name, Smith, and hit Enter. Automatically, it's moved down to dialogue. But I want Smith to shout, because the hangar is big. So I'll, go, I'll click on parenthetical, and I'll write shouting, and then hit Return again. We're still on the dialogue category, so I can simply write. I know you're in here. Don't waste my time. And hit return. When you hit return, it moves back up to the action category. And now I want to show another scene in the conning tower, the main control tower for the airport. So I will click Transition, right Cut, Enter, and then I can go back to the scene heading and type External Conning Tower Front entrance, let's spell that correctly, front entrance, night. Press enter and then I can describe some action. So you can see that pretty quickly you can build up a script 
that looks quite professional, everything's in the correct place. You can save it. Let's call it uh, test script. Save the draft. If we go back to the script, you can see that once the script is finished, you can submit to Amazon Studios. This is very interesting because a team of professionals will review the script and if they find it interesting, they might take an option out to study it further. In which case they will pay you to hold the script for three months while they develop it. So all in all, it's a very useful program, it's simple to use, and you also have the chance of submitting your script to a team of professionals who will tell you whether it's a good script or a bad script, and whether you have a chance of getting it published. In this course, we've looked at the main elements needed to create a movie script. From the original idea, to the storyline, to the practical aspects of formatting the script, and the directions required. The original three-act structure postulated by Aristotle all those years ago has been developed by modern scriptwriters. Until now, we have a perfect plan for creating a good movie. All you need is the idea and the application and anyone can create a movie script that could be accepted by Hollywood or a main film producer. When your script is finished, there are a few things you need to consider before you try and submit it to a company or an agent to try and get it made into a film. Before submitting your script, ensure that it complies with industry formatting guidelines. If you use Amazon StoryWriter or a similar software, then this is taken care of automatically. Normally, a query letter or pitch letter should accompany the script with the contents as follows. State a brief introduction and the purpose of the letter, the movie script title in capital letters, the movie logline a synopsis and a short biography. A logline is simply a one-sentence description of your movie with a hook to interest the reader. The best way to come up with a logline is to browse the loglines of movies on this website where you can see one-sentence descriptions of many successful films. Here is a one-sentence logline for Die Hard. It's short and designed to hook the reader into wanting to know more and see the film. The synopsis should be no longer than a paragraph, just to tell the basic story as briefly as possible, leaving out all the detail. A short biography is highly recommended, even if you have no related experience. But don't lie. It's very difficult to gather the information necessary to distribute a script yourself. It's best to pay a professional to approach industry professionals. This service is not expensive and well worth the trouble. Two services you might consider are on the screen right now. I have no connection with either organisation. I really hope you've enjoyed this course. Now it's time to get your head down and write those scripts. Keep in mind that anyone can do it. If you're not going to be the next Spielberg, then who is? Goodbye. A new scriptwriter may start with a great idea, a brilliant idea, and enthusiastically start to write the script, 
trying to develop it as he goes. For a variety of reasons, this is not a good idea. Firstly, if we don't have a firm idea of the whole story, we are writing in the dark, hoping that things will become clearer as the script develops. This approach tends to leave plot holes, and the script is in danger of becoming a series of action events with no progression of character or theme. Secondly, even though a movie script is a relatively short document, it is complex and made up of distinct parts, which need to relate to each other in the correct way. Keeping track of these parts without previous planning is a hard task. And lastly, script readers are looking for a particular definite structure. It's a movie structure that has been proven over time and is successful at keeping audiences interested and riveted to their seats. If your script does not have this structure, it will probably not be read at all. Your project will be dead in the water. The movie industry has developed a standard letter, a query letter or pitch letter, which they like to see before a script is considered. A screenplay itself is never sent. A pitch letter is received and the person reading it, if he's intrigued by the idea, will ask you for your script. Luckily, the creation of a pitch letter is hugely beneficial to you in the early stages of writing the script. It focuses your mind on the major elements of the story, helps define the main characters and establishes the theme all in just one page of writing. The standard pitch letter presents the title, the genre, whether it's crime, spy, horror or romance, for example, the logline, which is a one sentence description of the whole movie, a synopsis, which is one or two paragraphs highlighting the main points, and finishing off with a short writer's biography. This letter is a really must-have. Bear in mind that Hollywood has hundreds, thousands of really great writers, much better or at least as good as you and I. It's a waste of time trying to impress them with your fantastic writing and try to get your script in front of them. The pitch letter is extremely important it is the only way to get noticed initially. Creating a pitch letter is a difficult task. Many writers can struggle for months to write the perfect script and find it really hard to write one page of a pitch letter. It should encapsulate your whole movie script in simple terms in short sentences. Modern screenwriters, such as Sid Field, Blake Snyder and Michael Haig, have further developed the original idea of Aristotle's three acts into a more complex structure. It's a structure which works, is successful and it's the kind of thing that Hollywood are definitely looking for. However, as the structure becomes more complex, it becomes more difficult to organise and we need tools to help us. Almost all scriptwriters use the concept of beats to describe the story evolution of their movie. A beat is a sequence of short scenes presenting a part of the story and different writers may use between 8 to 16. This is a great way to organise your work helps keep scenes in order and also allows you to plan the overall structure in line with the Hollywood requirements. Beats can be written either in words on a table in this form or as a cork board where sticky notes or cards can be pinned to the board in various locations.
In section 2, you learn how to structure the perfect movie script and how and where to include those events that make a successful movie. A corkboard is a great tool to play around with, but it's not portable. Script beats can be organised using a software such as Celtex, which is a free script writing platform. But I prefer a software that allows you to dig deeper into the structure so that you can examine the scenes and all the notes attached to it. The screenshot shows the first level of a presentation I created for planning my movie scripts. It's basically a digital representation of the corkboard concept, but with one important difference. A mouse click on any circle will expand it to show more detail, such as a list of scenes in that beat, some images, or even a clickable URL to other resources on the internet to help you in writing your script. In section 3 you will learn how to create and use such a template and how to copy it and use it for all your movie script organisation. The pitch or query letter is vital for submitting your finished script for consideration by an agent or movie VIP. However, making it your first task will focus your mind on your story and is a great test of your own understanding of the plot turns. Before any script can make it into the production setup to be made into a movie, first it must get past an agent or a producer. An agent or producer doesn't simply read every script that comes across his desk. They read what is called a pitch letter or a query letter. The query letter is very short and it just gives you the basic idea and the basic information about a movie plot and what happens within it. The difference between a successful screenwriter and a failure comes down to just one thing. Not a great movie script or a fantastic idea but a great pitch letter. It's not only necessary but absolutely essential if a script is to be noticed. The guiding principle is simplicity. The letter must be short and hook the reader from the very beginning. The object is to get the agent or producer to ask to read the movie script. Let's take a look at the structure of the perfect pitch letter. First of all, introduce the title of the movie. This is simply done in one sentence and the title of the movie is in capital letters. Then you state the genre. By placing this early on in the letter, the agent or producer knows if he should continue or not, because they deal with different genre so they may not be interested in that particular style. Creating a great logline is perhaps the most challenging part of the letter. A logline describes the whole movie in just one or two sentences. In this example on the screen, we can see the logline for the film Terminator, written by James Cameron.
and in this example we see the logline for Die Hard with Bruce Willis. You can see that in this logline for Die Hard it gives a lot of information in a very short space with very few words. We're given the hero's name, John McClane, his job, NYPD, he's a New York policeman. His conflictual quest is to save some hostages. We have the villain's name and his status, it's Gruber and he's a terrorist. We know when because there's a Christmas party involved and where because it's stated that the, the conflict happens in Los Angeles. In addition, we're also told that McLean's wife's last name is Gennaro, which serves to intrigue us a little bit. Why should their names be different? This is just one more reason why we should be curious about watching the movie. The best way to develop this skill of writing a movie logline is to search for successful movies in the database at www.imdb.com and analyse the log lines. You should write a very brief synopsis. Introduce your main characters, explain what they are trying to do and what barriers or obstacles they face in their quest. Finish off the synopsis by stating what will happen if they fail at their task. What are the consequences or the stakes of the game? The synopsis displayed is extracted from the pitch letter sent to promote the movie Terminator written by James Cameron. The challenge is to make every word count, keeping the paragraph short but including the essential ingredients of the movie. The letter is finished with an author biography, but a very short one. It could be the easiest part of the whole letter, but it should also be crafted carefully. The bio should focus only on positive aspects of the author's talents. Whatever positive aspects the author has, try to turn them around to the advantage of the movie script and show how they're relevant. However, if the author has no relevant diplomas, awards or experience, it isn't necessary to state this because this is negative. The bio should contain only positive elements. Finding these positive elements and stating how they contribute to the script is part of the way in which you sell the author and help to get his script read. I'm going to explain how one professional screenwriter, Blake Snyder, organises a script into beats. A beat is a sequence of scenes, and this paradigm that Blake Snyder uses is a proven success in Hollywood. In subsequent videos, I'll show you how this technique is transferred onto a physical cork board so that you can organise and order your thoughts and scenes and later on how we can transpose that onto a free presentation software so that it's fully portable wherever you go. I encourage you strongly to purchase the book by Blake Snyder. It's called Save the Cat and it will teach you everything you need to know to write great scripts and to submit them successfully to movie producers. The story is split into 15 beats or scene sequences. Each beat is described by its function in the movie. 
The table shown represents the first stage of the process and contains the beat title, the page number or numbers, where it should appear and a brief summary which expands on the title. I'll explain in detail the purpose of each beat and we're going to assume that the ideal script is 110 pages long, which is 110 minutes in movie time. The first image as the audience sees sets the tone for the movie, giving the viewers expectations of what they're going to see. Remember the opening scene for the first Star Wars movie? It left us in no doubt we were in for an exciting adventure in space. The hero is also introduced in his normal life before everything changes. The open and final images should be like bookends, similar but different and opposite. At some point during the first five pages the movie script theme should be stated. This is often in the form of a question from a minor character to the hero. A question such as, is it better to be honest and poor or devious and rich? This theme is then explored throughout the movie. The setup should be complete within the first 10 pages and has various functions. It describes the hero's normal life before it changes and also introduces all the main characters either directly or by other reference. The hero's faults are shown and normally the greatest faults have to be reversed if he is to succeed and overcome the obstacles in the rest of the script. List the minor faults and try to correct them in various ways in the rest of the movie script. The catalyst is an event that turns the hero's life upside down literally and sends him in a new direction. It should be sudden, completely unexpected and force his hand. Perhaps it's a visit from a stranger with a terrible message or an inheritance with strings attached. Maybe a violent robbery or just losing a job. The event should be strong enough to change the hero's situation so that he has to take a different direction in life, perhaps necessitating a journey. The debate occurs between pages 12 and 25. In this section the hero is wrestling with a question. Should I take the challenge and move in the new direction or stay here and try to stay safe? Deep down he knows there's no choice. If he is to succeed in getting what he needs, he needs to move on. But during this time he severely doubts his own abilities and may search out a mentor to help him decide. On page 25 we break into Act 2. The hero leaves his old world into the new, which is very different from his usual comfortable situation. He has started his quest towards his goal. The hero must make a conscious decision to enter Act 2 and not just find himself there driven by events. This is too passive for the audience. The hero needs to be decisive and take action. The beast story serves two functions. Normally it's a romance where the theme can be explored but also provides a change in pace and flavour to the A story. After the big changes in Act 1 the audience needs a breather and a love interest provides just that. The B story runs parallel with the A story of course and it has a positive effect on the movie outcome. This section is called Fun and Games and occurs between pages 30 to 55. But of course in a dramatic story it can be anything 
but fun and games. Basically, it's the heart of the movie. It does tend to be a bit lighter than the rest, and the theme is explored fully. The hero grows in confidence, having some successes against the baddie, before crossing over into the rest of the movie towards Act 3, where things get very serious indeed. In later section, the bad guys pile on the pressure and seem to inevitably overcome the hero. And so we reach the midpoint of the movie script, on page 55. This is the point where things change. Up until now, the hero has had some success, but it's a false success. From this point on, the bad guy piles on the pressure until it seems as though the hero cannot possibly succeed. So far we've achieved a lot, up to the midpoint in our script. We've introduced the hero, the villains, and all the main characters, and they've been developed somewhat. We know what the hero wants, and we know what is opposing him. We've also introduced a B story in the form of a love interest, which will run parallel to and supplement and complement the main story. For several scenes now, the hero has had some successes against the adversary, against his antagonist, and he even thinks that he might be winning. But this is uh, quite temporary, and the midpoint on page 55 is where things turn around. Things get much harder as the baddies regroup and start to attack the hero remorselessly. In the 20 pages after the midpoint, the bad guys regroup, and they throw everything they've got at the hero. Things get worse and worse from this point on. How can he possibly succeed? This is also the time when the hero loses the support of anyone helping him. His friends desert him. He is truly alone against tremendous odds. It looks as though he's finished. At the point on page 75, it seems as though all is lost. This is the opposite of the up point the hero experienced on page 55, the midpoint. It really does seem as though he can't possibly pull through, but of course this final defeat is only temporary. There is often a death at this point. It may be the mentor, a friend, or even a pet. And it's symbolic of the death of the old ways moving into something new. After the all is lost moment on page 75, in the ten pages that follow we have a period called the Dark Night of the Soul. This is the uh, the lowest point for the hero is the darkness before the dawn. He feels desperate, hopeless and alone, with no chance in his mind of succeeding with the quest. As we break into Act 3, the hero digs deep into his resources and finds the answer that will defeat his antagonists and save the day. This is largely due to the influence of the love interest in the beast story and the conversations they had about the theme. Remember, the theme was stated way back on page 5. He has the solution. All he has to do is to apply it, beating the bad guys and winning the heart of his lady. It's time to act. Between pages 85 to 110, the movie moves into the final acts. The movie is wrapped up and all loose ends are tied together. The hero applies the lessons he's learned throughout the movie. 
The bad guys are dispatched. The henchmen first, leading up to the, the end of the main villain. The main villain and his horde must be completely destroyed if a new world is to be created from the old. The final image is the opposite to the opening image and should show huge changes. Now we know precisely, right down to the page, exactly what scenes are required and what kind of events are needed to create the perfect Hollywood movie script. In the next lesson I'm going to show you how to use a physical corkboard to organise the, the scene elements in the form of cards. Now that we've identified the main beats of the movie, our story, and we know what kind of events need to appear on what pages of the script, we need a really good visual means of organising our sequence of scenes. Blake Snyder recommends a simple corkboard with cards pinned to the board in certain locations to help jog our memories of what should be there and how we should organise the scenes. This is my planning board for a story I'm working on at the moment. It's about 90% complete and almost ready to be written out as a script. I'm going to turn it around and demonstrate how it's built and used from scratch. Although there are three acts, the board is divided into four parts, which can be done with masking tape. The first section represents Act 1 from page 1 to 25. The second represents Act 2, page 25 to 55, which is the midpoint of an ideal script of 110 pages. The third represents Act 2, page 55 to page 85. And the fourth represents Act 3, which goes from 85 to 110. If you wanted to, you could write the page numbers for each section on the masking tape to help you decide where to place the events. Now we can mark the major points on the board taken from the 15 beats described in a previous video. First of all, the points break into two, midpoint and break into three. You can add the first and last images and also the theme on page 5 to remind yourself that the theme should be stated in the first five pages. Mark the catalyst point on page 12. This is the event that changes everything. And leave a note reminding yourself that the debate occurs between pages 12 to 25. This is the time when the hero says to himself, should I go? or shouldn't I? Can I? Can't I? Mark page 30 in Act 2 with the B story, where a love interest may be introduced. From page 30 to the midpoint on page 55 is where the fun and games section happens. This is the time where the hero has some success and there's some kind of action before the plot turns around at the midpoint for the worse. The bad guys close in between pages 55 and 75 and on page 75 all is lost. This is when the hero situation is the worst it could possibly be. It seems that defeat is imminent and he can't possibly win. But of course this defeat is temporary. The Dark Knight of the Soul occurs between pages 75 and 85 before the script breaks into Act 3. The finale is the whole of Act 3 
This is after the hero has had the brilliant idea and starts to turn things around and defeat all the baddies. The next stage is to gather a pack of yellow cards, or any colour that you prefer, and begin to develop your script idea, making it more concrete by writing down the ideas and pinning them to the board. Think of an image, or an image sequence, that represents the tone and style of your movie, and now pin it to the board. Pages 1 to 10 is when we set up the movie when all the main characters are introduced, or at least referred to, and also shows what the hero's life is like before everything changes. Write down things like the characters' names, their main personality features, and pin the card to the board. Use a separate card for the hero, and list his character faults, because these will be corrected throughout the movie allowing him to change so he can meet his challenges. Imagine scenes that clearly show his normal life and his faults, but also his nice side, so that the audience identifies with him and wants to know what will happen to him. Write all these on a card and pin it to the board. Sometime before page 5, a colleague a friend, or even a passerby, will ask him a question, a very relevant question. This question will represent the theme of the movie as you move forward, and will be addressed again and again, before it's resolved at the end. What is this question? What is the theme of your movie? You should be very sure of this. Who will ask it? How will the hero reply? Write it on the card and pin it to the board. Write a description of the catalytic event on a card and pin it on page 12. From 12 to 25 is the period when the hero is deciding if and how to react to the catalyst, the event that is risking to change his life. He's asking himself lots of questions in this debate period. Is it safe? Can I do it? There's a lot of self-doubt here. He may consult an older friend or a family member or some other kind of guru such as a college professor. In this part we must be clear on what the stakes are if he enters the quest and he fails. They must be very serious. Imagine the scenes, write it all down and pin it on the board. At the end of this scene, the hero acts decisively and decides to enter the game. Describe how and why and pin it to the board with another card. Whatever other ideas come to you during this process, dialogue or events, anything at all, jot them down on a separate coloured card and pin them to the board in the right place. You'll find that the process is great for stimulating the imagination and also bringing up new ideas that you can add into your movie script. This is a great help when you get to the point where you need to turn this storyboard into a written script. Now I've shown you the first act. Using the beat structure we demonstrated and discussed in a previous video, take each event and pin it in the correct place on the board. Try to describe that event in the terms of scenes, any dialogue and the characters involved. In the next video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the same kind of planning tool in a software format by using a demonstration platform online. Using a screenplay planner to organise the beats or scene sequences for a movie script is a great way to organise your ideas. It helps you to place the events in exactly the right place, in a, in a place that the audience expects and will love to follow. 
Blake Snyder also adds actual scenes to the board as well. I strongly recommend that you, you buy his book Save the Cat and you'll see exactly how he does this. Although fun to play with and I've used it to plan a movie script, it has one serious disadvantage. It gets very cluttered. There are pieces of paper pinned to the board all over the place. So I use a demonstration software to organise the beats into a structure that I can drill deeper down into, adding more and more detail as I wish. The software I'm going to use is called Prezi.com and it's normally used to make project, sales or marketing presentations on both on or offline. It lends itself very well to the purpose of screenplay planning. Enter Prezi.com into your browser and click Get Started. We're going to use the basic and scrolling down with the mouse we'll continue with a free account. We complete the details, our name, email address and password. Click on Not a Robot and create our free account. And click on New Presentation. You can see here, if you scroll down, that there are many templates to choose from for different purposes. All of the templates need different skill levels to manipulate them. So I'm going to choose the very first one because it's for a novice. Click on the presentation, click use this presence, sorry, click use this template and it will quickly open up for us to work on. The first thing I'd do is to change the title by simply clicking in the box and writing whatever we like, either screenplay planner or the title of a possible movie. Delete any text that we don't require. At the beginning we only need one topic circle so I'm going to right click on the others and simply delete them from the drop down menu. I'm going to uh, change the background. Here's a corkboard image. I'll click on the image. It'll be inserted. Let's wait a little while and there it is. All we need to do now is to place the topic circle in a better position. We're going to take this initial topic and we're going to duplicate it because this topic in fact is one of our beats. We know we have 15 beats, so we're going to copy this 
by right clicking and on the drop down menu clicking copy. Now we can't use the mouse to paste on this platform, we simply click Ctrl V. If we keep hitting Ctrl V again and again, we'll keep reproducing the same topic circle. When we have 15 beats, which all look identical, we need to change the colour to our liking and also to change the titles inside the circles because if you remember our software planning board is going to look like this. It's separated into three acts with page numbers for each beat and the beat is identified within the topic circles. Once the beat circles are complete you have all the main events and items that you need for a great movie script at your fingertips. You can refer to them and add to them any time at all. The process ensures that the key events that are necessary for any purchasable Hollywood script are there in the right place. In the next video you'll learn how to complete each beat with the details from your movie script. So after we've created our board so that it looks like this, we can start to add the detail we need. For this software version of the planner, I've separated the board into three instead of four, so that each horizontal line represents an act. This means that the midpoint is somewhere in the middle of Act 2. There are 15 major beats and the page numbers are clearly marked on each beat. If you remember from the physical cork board, Act 1 was quite busy. Act 2 seemed quite busy as well, and Act 3 was marked just as finale. Of course, there's much going on in Act 3, so I've just added minor beats in green to remind us of the detail required. Click on the first beat, opening image. It will expand and you'll see a text area for taking notes. Also, you can insert an image by using the menu above. Insert image. And I've chosen a Jeep which is in line with the text where I've suggested that someone is being chased through the desert. If we click on the subtopic characters to the right, it will open up and I simply make a note that in this scene or sequence of scenes, the main character is Nate Baxter and there are four cat bike riders who are minor characters. Anything at all can be listed in this section and if you need to make other notes, simply create another subtopic and add them there. This character list should really be a feature of every beat. So when you open up this beat from the original template, simply delete any text or images or subtopics that are not needed and replace it with your own text and images. Click on the next beat, the theme stated on page 5, and here you can make a note exactly what is your theme. Is it love? Is it money? Is it about integrity, honesty, trust or loyalty? Make up your mind. Now this theme needs to be stated, as we talked about before, and it's a question from Mike, Nate's brother, who has a completely different outlook on life. Maybe one believes that love is the answer to everything, and the other one believes that money is the answer to everything. 
So state your movie theme together with information about who asked the theme or who makes the statement. We have a subtopic called Notes. Click on this subtopic and you can read the notes that I've written quickly. Nate and his brother have always been rivals and are opposite in many things. They both have to change in order to see the truth of life and the value of love. Here again, when you open up this subtopic and you retitle it, delete any elements you find in there from the original template and just add your own notes about the situation. Click on Overview to get back to the original board. And now we can click on Setup, which occurs between pages 1 to 10. Write down the things that need to appear in this beat. Main characters are introduced, or at least hinted at, or referred to. Show the hero's normal life before the catalyst changes everything and list the hero's minor and major faults to be addressed later on in the movie. The first subtopic could be labelled Hero's Faults and this is where we could list them. These are the things that need to be corrected throughout the movie if he is to succeed in his quest. For example, Nate doesn't care about anything. He professes to need no one. He's intelligent, but he's always had an easy life. He's never had to fight for anything. He is selfish and reluctant to put himself out to help anyone. He is vain about his looks and his physicality. Subtopic, Subtopic 2 could be used to list the main characters sequence of scenes. While each satellite topic might be dedicated to the description of the characters. So here we have Nate Baxter, his brother, Maria Henson, Barry Jackson, etc. So we create the subtopic for Nate Baxter and we can add some details to flesh out his character. He's a marketer and writer, lives in LA, he's 25 years old, etc. Simply click on each beat element and enter the detail that we discussed in our previous videos. When we get to the finale, you can see that we have smaller subbeats in green at the bottom. This is where you can add the elements discussed for the finale between pages 85 and 110. These are the things that need to happen during that period so that a new world is created and all the villains are vanquished. Now if this particular beat or scene structure was so common in successful Hollywood films then it should be quite easy to find. For this session we're going to analyse a successful movie script called Looper. It's a science fiction time travel type, type movie and we're going to take a look at the script and find out if we can pinpoint the turning points and the major beats. Before we start, let's take a look at the logline for the movie Looper. This is the one sentence description of the whole storyline. In 2074, when the mob wants to get rid of someone, the target is sent into the past, where a hired gun waits. Someone like Joe, who one day learns the mob wants to close the loop by sending back Joe's future self for assassination. 
The synopsis expands on the log line and gives more information. I'll give you a minute to read it before moving on. First, we should have open and final images that are a little like bookends. They're similar but different in important ways. They are opposites. In the opening images, Joe waits in a cornfield for a victim from the future. It's a normal day of work for him. And here's a script beginning describing the scene. For the final scene images, Joe is in a cornfield again, but he's dead. He has changed so much that he killed himself to save a child. I searched for a statement about the movie theme in the first five pages. Instead of one statement, the theme was referred to again and again. Basically, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Everyone's out for themselves, for what they can get. It motivates everything. What you are is what you have. The strongest evidence of this is perhaps when Joe uncovers his prized possession, a cherry red sports car, before going out on the town. We'll ignore the setup between pages 1 to 10 as I want to focus on the main beats and turning points. The catalyst is the event that changes things in Joe's life. And sure enough, it appears at the beginning of page 13. Joe must choose between helping a friend in trouble or staying safe. He chooses to help and later denies his friend, but the whole process shakes him up. The script describes how this event starts. There should be a big event to push our hero into Act 2. And we find this exactly where we should, on page 26. Joe's next victim happens to be himself, from the future. If the beat structure is correct, we should find a B story in the form of a love interest on or around page 30. And sure enough, Joe meets his future wife on page 31. Another big turning point needs to occur around page 55, which is the movie's midpoint. In the Looper script, Sarah finds Joe in her barn on the farm. And yes, it's bang on page 55 right in the middle of the storyline. I'm going to stop right there instead of going through the, the whole structure because the point is largely proven. Each time we search for an event or a beat with the right page number, then we eventually find something that correlates. It proves that this structure is behind successful films. Looper is an ideal script to analyse because it has around 110-112 pages. If you're working with a script that has more or less, then you'll need to compensate for the page numbers. In the course, you learn that successful movies have a definite structure that appeal to audiences and drive the story forward in an interesting way. Modern screenwriters have improved on the original Aristotle idea of a three-act story and added extra events and things that need to happen within the plot to move the story forward. 
We then went on to discuss how writers like Blake Snyder and others split a script up into a series of beats or scene sequences and how these beats can be used as a visual representation which is also a great tool and an aid for planning a script. It seems pretty obvious that if you want to have any chance at all of selling your script then your movie needs to follow the structure that is accepted by 99% of Hollywood producers. You also learned that a pitch letter or a query letter, while essential at the end of your project, so you can submit your work to a producer or an agent, it's also very beneficial before you even start to write, because it focuses your mind on the essentials of your story. If you'd like more insight into transferring the story ideas onto an actual script, you may like to enrol in one of my other courses. It's called How to Write a Movie Script. Use the coupon code below and you'll benefit from an 80% discount. I hope you've enjoyed this course. Take care, happy writing and I'll see you again. Bye bye.